Greek Mythology, Introduction to Mythology and the Origin of Man in Greek Mythology Hello, in this video you will see a brief context of Greek mythology and its characters that will allow you to understand in greater depth and breadth the following videos in which will be treated in greater detail each of the aspects that are briefly explained in this video. The human being throughout history can be defined as a symbolic being by nature, and it is precisely in the field of symbolism, where the ability to build concepts capable of transcending their own physical existence is manifested, to thus assume the existence of a parallel and interacting immaterial world, which through the use of reason and intelligence serves as a platform where you can find answers and explanations to the universe around him. This is how mythology, as a suitable space for the explanation of the supernatural, has been and continues to be present in the imaginary, both individual and collective, of all cultures. Myths, as well as mythological beings, are the answers to the deepest questions of the human being about the mysteries of his own existence and his role in the universe as a thinking living being. All human groups since prehistoric times have been developing different levels of explanation about the natural phenomena they witnessed in a strong association between their known world of things, animals, manifestations of nature and collective memories transmitted from generation to generation with an imaginary world, bringing to them through speech, the ability to reproduce, to move in time and to generate good or evil through the direct or indirect intervention of supernatural. Being similar to human beings, albeit with superior skills and abilities, also with the same virtues and defects to a superlative degree and with magical powers. As far as the mythological development of the Greeks is concerned, it is important to note that it is not radically new or different from what has gone before, nor does it have a greater originality with respect to the preceding mythological scaffolding developed by other cultures. The Greeks in their mythological understanding seek explanations to natural phenomena that occur daily such as lightning, storms, the night, the moon, as well as seeking explanations about the meaning of their existence, death and the afterlife. Precisely these questions are the ones they seek to solve through their mythology. The Greek mythical structure has its basis in the systematization of the oral tradition made by Homer and Hesiod around the 12th century BC. This mythological construct has the particularity of being developed in a complex scheme of relationships, in which the gods themselves relate to each other, but also to men, in a scenario capable of explaining the whole, and everything that happens in the world. Let us begin with the origins of the world and of men. The origin of the world, the earth, the sky, the oceans, the celestial bodies, particularly the sun and the moon, etc. As well as the circumstances surrounding the life of human beings, they were the first and foremost questions that needed to be explained. The simple observation of the existence of an order endowed with certain logic in certain patterns of nature, led to conceive the opposite idea, that is, the prior existence of chaos as a principle, it is about the primordial state, an unlimited space where matter is in an inert and totally disorganized state, in this sense Hesiod's vision suggested that it could represent matter without form and infinite space. It was a primordial void, from which everything was created, including the universe and the Greek gods. According to Hesiod, chaos was also a distant, subterranean and shadowy place. From chaos emerged Gia, as the eternal and unshakable sustenance of all things, goddess of the earth, and Eros, prince of love and creation, symbol of the force of attraction that leads the elements to unite to engender life. In the genesis of Greek mythology, contrary to the Hebrew conception of the Bible, Creation is not the result of the will of a single superior god, but of the union of all beings under the influence of love, represented in Eros. Without male help, Gia gave birth to Uranus who is the starry sky, abode of the immortals, who fertilized her. Thus Uranus was the son and husband of Gia, the mother earth. From this union were born first the titans, which are detailed below. Oceanus, he was the titan of the ocean and all bodies of salt water. With Thetis, he was the father of the Oceanides, the three thousand nymphs of the sea. Thetis, goddess of water, especially fresh water. CEO or Polo, represented the stars, especially the northern star. With Phoebe she had Asteria, Leto and Lelanto. Creo, with the Tetanus Eurybia he was the father of Perses, Pallas and Astrio. Hyperion, he represented the light of dawn and was the god of observation. Japetus, father of Prometheus, Atlas, Manetius and Epimetheus. T, goddess of sight. Rhea, goddess of fertility and motherhood. Together with Cronus, she had several Olympian gods. Themis, represented justice and order. Mnemosyne. She represented memory, with Zeus she had the Muses. 
Kronos, he represented the personification of time. He was the main and youngest titan of the first generation, after overthrowing his father Uranus and castrated him. He was represented with a sickle. He was the father of Zeus, Demeter, Hera, Poseidon, Hades and Hestia. To learn more in detail about these characters, the first and second generation titans and titanides of Greek mythology, visit the videos on my channel. You're going to love it. After the birth of Cronus, Gia and Uranus decreed that no more titans would be born, so the Cyclopes followed, one-eyed beings, and also the Hecatonchires or Sendimans, endowed with a huge body with fifty heads and a hundred arms, true demons of darkness, who enter into combat with their father Uranus, who throws them into the bowels of the earth. Then, enraged with the brutal action of Uranus on his children, Gia turns to his son Cronus for help, who can put an end to the kingdom of Uranus. Cronus, according to Hesiod, was the youngest and most twisted-minded, the most terrible of Gia's sons, who in response to his mother Gia's complaints, castrated his father and became the ruler of the gods with his sister and wife Rhea as his consort and the other titans as his court. Rhea was a divinity of caves and mountains, walls and fortresses, of nature and animals. Generally Greek tradition points out that, from this castration, Aphrodite emerged from the sea, after her father's testicles fell into the ocean. Also from chaos emerged Erebus, primordial god and personification of darkness and shadow, which filled all the corners and holes of the world, and also emerged Nyx, the goddess of the night. Nyx, the night, with her brother Erebus, the darkness, conceived a couple of primordial gods, Aether, the pure brightness and luminosity, and Hemera, who represented the day. Gia and her descendants also gave birth to an enormous number of divinities that personify multiple natural forces, among which stand out. Thanatos, Death. Hypnos, Sleep and Dreams. Nemesis, Revenge, Old Age, Discord, Fraud. As well as many other allegories, which will be discussed in detail in the following videos on this channel. Kronos joins his sister Rhea, and begets Hera, who is the wife and sister of Zeus, known for her violent and vengeful nature, mainly against Zeus' mistresses and offspring, but also against the mortals with whom she crossed. In ancient Greek myths, the realm of Hades is the misty and gloomy abode of the dead, also called Erebus, where all mortals went. Poseidon, he is the god of the seas, agitator of the earth, and of earthquakes in Greek mythology, in his benign aspect, Poseidon was conceived creating new islands and offering calm seas. When angry or ignored, he cracked the ground with his trident and caused floods, earthquakes, sinking and shipwrecks. Zeus, the king of gods and men who rules the gods of Olympus like a father rules a family. He is the god of the sky and thunder and therefore of energy. He is known for his numerous affairs and lovers, the fruit of which many deities and heroes were born, including Athena, the goddess of war, civilization, wisdom, reason, intelligence, strategy in combat, victory, sciences, crafts, industry, inventions, arts, crafts, navigation, heroes, strength courage, protection, the city-state, education, justice, law and skill. Apollo, the god of the arts, of the bow and arrow, who threatened or protected from high in the heavens, being identified with the light of truth. He is the god of sudden death, plagues and diseases, but also the god of healing and protection against evil forces. He is also the god of beauty, perfection, harmony, balance and reason, the initiator of young people in the adult world, protector of shepherds, sailors and archers. Artemis, she is the Greek goddess of hunting, wild animals, virgin land, births, virginity and maidens, who brought and relieved women's illnesses. Hermes, is the messenger god, of the frontiers and the travelers who crossed them, of wit and commerce in general, of cunning, of thieves and liars, and the one who guides the souls in the underworld, Hades, and he is also the inventor of fire. Persephone, goddess of fecundity and fertility of the earth, she is considered the queen of the underworld. The best known theory is that Hades abducted Persephone, taking her to the underworld where he made her his queen. Another version indicates that Zeus gave his consent for the wedding to take place, since he did not want conflicts with Hades. Dionysus, god of fertility and wine, he was the inspirer of ritual madness and ecstasy. Perseus, hero of Greek mythology, he is the son of Zeus and Danae, the princess of Argos, which makes him a semi-god. 
He is the great hero who put an end to the life of the fearsome Medusa and used her head to turn his enemies into stone. Heracles, hero of Greek mythology, he is the son of Zeus and Alcmene, a mortal queen. He is the most famous of the Greek heroes, the prototype of virility and the leader of the Olympic order against the Ketonic monsters. His extraordinary strength is the main of his attributes, but so are courage, pride, and virility, he is considered the ancestor of the kings of Sparta. The term Ketonic refers to the gods or spirits of the underworld, as opposed to the celestial deities. Helen, known as Helen of Troy or Helen of Sparta, is a character of Greek mythology whose name has the meaning of firebrand or torch. Considered daughter of Zeus and sought after by many heroes because of her great beauty. She was seduced or kidnapped by Paris, Prince of Troy, which originated the Trojan War. Minos, he was the king of Crete, son of Zeus. Despite having an illustrious career in the afterlife as a judge of the fate of damned souls, he rejected the gods after they gave him a sign for the right to become king of Crete, most notably that he ignored the wishes of Poseidon, deciding not to sacrifice an impressive white bull that emerged from the sea. This so enraged Poseidon that he caused Minos' wife, Pasiphae, to fall in love with the bull, thus, from her subsequent copulation with the bull resulted in the birth of Minotaur. The Muses, in Greek mythology the Muses were female divinities and presided over the various types of poetry and music, as well as the arts and sciences. The Muses were nine, and were born of nine consecutive nights of love between Zeus and Mnemosyne, one of the Titanides. Therefore, these Muses are the granddaughters of gods such as Uranus and Gia. Nymphs, the nymphs in Greek mythology are called secondary divinities of nature, they are found in the air, in the forest and in the water, they are daughters of Zeus, they could be petitioned, although they could also become feared, characterized by their angelic grace, they represented fertility in life, besides that they were the ones who were in charge of the upbringing of man, animals, and the children of the gods. These magical creatures healed wounded men, plants and animals, caressed them, were kind, intelligent, radiated joy and love. To learn more in detail about each of these characters, the Ketonic monsters, muses, and nymphs of Greek mythology, visit the videos on my channel. You'll love it. After seeing in a very summarized way the descendants of Gia, let's continue with the story. Cronus feared that his children could threaten his kingdom and dethrone him in the same way he did with his father Uranus, so he decided to devour his children, although his mother Rhea manages to save Zeus taking advantage of the shadows of the night, taking him to the island of Crete, at the top of Mount Ida, where she hides him in the depths of a cavern. In the meantime he presents Cronus with a large stone as if it were his son, which he immediately devours without a second thought. Zeus grows up in the jungle, suckled by the goat Amalda. As an adult, he seeks out his father Cronus, whom he forces to vomit out his brothers and expels him, throwing him into the depths of the universe, in the region that extends beneath the earth and the seas, thus fulfilling his fears of being dethroned by his father. Subsequently Zeus takes up residence on Mount Olympus, and together with his sister Hera begins his reign in a court composed of his other siblings along with other gods. However, he encounters rivals, such as the Titans, other sons of Gaia and Uranus, who live on Mount Otris. The Titans will try to climb Mount Olympus, but they cannot compete with the might of Zeus who possesses the weapon of lightning, with which he throws them into the abysses of Tartary, where 300 huge stones ensure that they can never get out, which will symbolize the rugged territory of Greece. Finally, Zeus also triumphs over his last adversaries, Typhon, the demon of hurricanes, and the four giants, Enceladus, Hyperbios, Ephialtus, and Polybotos, sons also of Gia and Uranus, who are chained under Etna and other volcanoes, where they do not cease to groan and shake, thus giving explanation to the numerous earth tremors in Greece and the fumaroles of the volcanoes. It is in this way that order succeeds chaos, and the disorganized forces of nature are subjected to a superior intelligence. Zeus orders to model in clay the figure of Pandora, the first woman, who is given to the god Epimetheus and from whose union the human race is born. The first generation of men lived in a golden age, in which they lived with the gods, without anxieties, fatigue or pain, permanently preserving the vigor of their bodies without the ailments of old age, and being able to have abundant food offered spontaneously by the earth. They enjoyed complete happiness, and although they were mortal, unlike the gods, death came to them like sleep. The first men who died were converted by Zeus into beneficent genii who watched over the living, observed their conduct and rewarded their virtues. The second human generation, on the other hand, lived in a silver age, but they were quite inferior beings to the first. 
They were lazy, and suffered from a permanent infantile stupidity. But Prometheus, son of one of the Titans and also a Titan, stole from Zeus the fire that was reserved exclusively for the immortals, and gave it to men as an emblem of endless progress. Thus men abandoned their permanent stillness, were able to leave the caverns and defend themselves from the rigors of winter, melted and forged metals and thus began the path of their permanent improvement. The Silver Age was followed by the Bronze Age, in which men, transformed into robust and violent beings, possessors of bronze weapons, left the gods aside and no longer honored them. Angry, Zeus threw Prometheus to the summit of the Caucasus, where an eagle ate his liver and unleashed upon mankind the waters of the flood. All men perished, except Deucalion, son of Prometheus and his wife Pyrrha, who, when the waters receded, won the forgiveness of Zeus by honors and sacrifices, and obtained pardon and resurrection for the human race. The Bronze Age was followed by the Iron Age, in which we still find ourselves, although men still count on the divine flame given to them by Prometheus, as a means of overcoming adversity, and thanks to which, one day, a man will succeed in matching the gods and return men to the Golden Age. Next video, The Primordial Gods of Greek Mythology. You will love it. For more videos on history, mythology, philosophy, or art visit my channel in the video description.